Hi everyone, this is Teacher Jane again and my topic for today is all about central and inscribed angles. And the examples that I'm going to discuss were lifted from the Mathematics 10, Quarter 2 module, pages 13 to 14. In my previous video, I was able to share with you the tallest Ferris wheel in the world, which is the High Rollers in Nevada, Las Vegas. It's like a wheel in motion. Once it completes its rotation, okay, you have completed a 360 degrees rotation. It holds 16 cards separated by equal arcs and it is supported by 112 cables and these cables can be related to the radius or the radii of circle and this is its center which is supported by this very very big okay, poles so our topic for today is very much related to a ferris wheel and how it was constructed let us first visualize what a central angle is a central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. So here's an example of a central angle. So if you notice, it is formed by a radius here and another radius and they meet at the center. So an angle is formed and the vertex is at the center, therefore this qualifies as a central angle. The second one is also an angle whose vertex is formed at the center and it has again a radius and another radius which is a central angle. Third one, is obviously not a central angle first thing its vertex is not on the circle on the center rather and these two rays are not are not radii of the circle so it's not a central angle now moving on there is a theorem related to the central angle which is called the central angle theorem the measure of the central angle is equal to the measure of the intercepted arc. So having this illustration, we have here k degrees, which is already an intercepted arc of angle 1. So this is angle 1. So if I'm going to extend angle 1, okay, it intersected the circumference of the circle. Therefore, it took... A part or a an arc of the circle and that is arc K so based on the theorem angle 1 the measure of angle 1 will be equal to arc K so for example if angle 1 is 30 degrees therefore arc K which is the intercepted arc is also 30 degrees so that's how the theorem works so let's apply now this theorem in our next example. So example, I have here angle YOZ whose measure is 115 degrees. Therefore, arc YZ is also 115 degrees. So let's determine now the specific parts. Okay, of the illustration, we have here the central angle, YOC, there. And you have the intercepted arc, the red one, arc YZ, which also measures 115 degrees. Now, let's apply now the central angle theorem in solving this problem. Segment AD is a diameter. So, here's segment AD, which is a diameter. Find the values of angle X, angle Y, and arc Z. So we have three unknowns here that we need to solve. Now, since we know that angle AOD is a straight angle, okay, therefore, this angle should be 180 degrees. Now, anyway, the easiest value here that we can solve is X. 
since angle X is a central angle that intercepts arc AB and arc AB is 25 degrees, therefore, angle X is also 25 degrees. Then here, we have arc Z, which is now an intercepted arc to angle COD, which measures 55 degrees. Therefore, Z is also 55 degrees okay, by central angle theorem. Now, we are left with Y. So, since we know that X plus Y plus 55 degrees should sum up to 180 degrees. Therefore, 25 plus 55 is 80. So, Y should be 100 degrees. Okay, to complete the 180 degree angle, which is a straight angle. So, to sum it up, X is 25 degrees, Y is 100 degrees, and Z is 55 degrees, or arc Z is 55 degrees. Now, let's move on to the next theorem, which is the sum of the central angles theorem, which states that the sum of the measures of the central angles of a circle with no interior points in common is 360 degrees meaning all the angles inside, okay, okay, and who's, who is a central angle, okay, it should sum up to 360 degrees. Okay, that's it. Let us now apply the sum of the central angle theorem by solving for the measure of the following arcs, arc ED, arc DC, arc CB, arc BA, and arc AE. Now, since the central angle measures are given by algebraic expression, let me write 4x as angle 1, 3x as angle 2, and this is angle 3, angle 4, and angle 5. Following the sum of the central angle theorem, we can write a formula that angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 plus angle 4 plus angle 5 will sum up to or will be equal to 360 degrees. Now, how do we solve now for the value of x here? So, we need to solve for the value of x. We will just substitute for these angles, the expressions given in each of these. So, angle 1 will be 4x plus 3x plus 3x plus 10 plus 2x, plus 2x minus 14, is equal to 360. So that's the way we are going to write it. Then we are combine all the x, we get 16x, then we combine positive 10 and negative 4, that gives you negative 4, equals 360. Then we are going to transpose negative 4, so, therefore, 360 will become 364. Okay, then on the left side is 16x. Then we divide both sides by 16. Okay, therefore, the value of x is 26. It's here. Then we are just going to substitute, okay, for the value of x in each expressions. Beside the angle, 4x will be 4 times 26, which is 104 degrees. Okay, 3x is 3 times 26. This is now 78 degrees. 3x is 78 plus 10, so this is 88 degrees. 2 times 26 is 52 degrees. Then 2x minus 14 is 52 minus 14. And this is 38 degrees. So this one, we have to correct this. This should be 38 degrees. So if we are going to add 104 plus 78 plus 88 plus 52 plus 38, so you have to check it using your calculator, and it should sum up to 360. Okay, were you able to get 360? Yes, since you are able to get 360, therefore the value of x is correct and the measures of angle 1 to 5 
are all correct. The next type of angles are what we call inscribed angles. Okay, what are inscribed angles? It is an angle whose vertex is on a circle and whose sides contain chords. So, for example, number one is not an inscribed angle because its vertex, okay, here's the vertex, is not on the circumference. So, for it to be an inscribed angle, its vertex should have been here. Okay, but it's not there, so it's not an inscribed angle. Okay, number two. Number two is a perfect example of an inscribed angle. Since it is formed by two chords, okay, we have this first chord, second chord, and the vertex lies on the circumference. The third one is a central angle. So it's not an inscribed angle. The fourth one is an inscribed angle since it is formed by a chord and another chord and the vertex lies on the circumference. Let us apply now inscribed angle theorem. What is stated in the inscribed angle theorem? The measure of the inscribed angle is equal to half the measure of the intercepted arc. So to explain further, here is a figure that has angle 1, which is an inscribed angle, and its intercepted arc is arc K. So I'm going to mark arc K here. Okay. And this is now angle 1. Angle 1, or the inscribed angle, is smaller than the intercepted arc. It is just half of arc K. So to apply this, okay, let's have this example. Number one, example, okay, this arc here, which is an intercepted arc of, let's call this angle one, which is an inscribed angle, measures 160 degrees. Okay, so what should be the measure of angle 1? So angle 1 here is just half of the arc. So this is 80 degrees. Now moving on to our second example, let's make our figure more complicated. Okay. So, let me erase this. Okay. So, we have here two central angles. Let's say this central angle is 40 degrees. Okay. And beside it is another central angle. Okay. Let's make this 50 degrees. So, therefore, we have this arc that is 40 Okay, and another arc here that is 50 degrees. Okay, and this whole arc, okay, is 90 degrees, which is now the intercepted arc of angle 1. So, how or what is the measure? of angle 1. So, the answer is 45 degrees. So, I'll write here, angle 1 is 45 degrees. Okay, let's have the third one. Okay, so we have another inscribed angle here. Let's call it angle 1. Suppose this angle is 60 degrees. Okay, and this angle here is 40 degrees, okay, which are both central angles. So, how is the measure or what is the measure of angle 1? So, this is 50 degrees. Okay, so let's move on now to the fourth figure. Okay, let's say this arc here 
Okay. Measures 100 degrees. Okay. What is the measure of angle 1, which is an inscribed angle? So, it is 50 degrees. Okay. You can pause this video to copy all these examples or screenshot these examples for you to study later. So, that's how the inscribed angle theorem works. That the angle is, is always smaller than the intercepted arc by one half. So, this is how it works. That's your inscribed angle, the 55 degrees, and the intercepted arc is your arc YZ, which is 110 degrees. Okay. Now, let us now try to solve this one. So, you're being asked to find the value of X, which is here, then Y, which is an arc, okay, and then the given are angle S, okay, measures 50 degrees, then arc PQ is 40 degrees, arc QR is unknown, which is Y. So, which one is easier to find? We can easily find angle X since its intercepted arc is arc PQ that measures 40 degrees. Therefore, this angle here is half of that. Okay. Half of 40 is 20 degrees. Now, since this angle is 50 degrees, okay, which is an inscribed angle, and its intercepted arc okay, is this big arc here. Okay, so, if that is 50, therefore, this arc here should be 100 degrees. You have to double it this time. So, if this portion of arc PR is already 40 degrees, but arc PR should be 100 degrees, therefore arc QR must be 60 degrees. Okay, that's how to analyze its value. So, to sum it up, X is equal to 20 degrees, Y or arc Y is equal to 60 degrees. I hope that I was able to help you in understanding this related theorems to circles. And I hope you will watch my next video because I'm going to discuss other theorems about the circle, like the segments okay, and other lines okay, formed in a circle. So with this, goodbye.